Happy Sunday, everyone! Welcome to New Eden FM. We have the music and news to enhance your Sunday. I'm Elandria of the Galaxy, and we are live in-game in the Akura system at the Kaldari Constructions Warehouse. Why are we here? Well, the galaxy is in a rebuilding phase in Nullsec, and I'm always interested in what the various governments have to say about capsular business interests. After all, there's a lot of this to be made when people are rebuilding, you know? So, here in the studio with us is our newest host, Immortals. How you doing? I'm fantastic, baby. I'm fantastic. Great. I'm glad you joined the show. We also have in the studio here with us to our producer, Maestro McKenzie. How are you doing today? Uh, I wish I was still in bed, actually. I feel like shit, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I hope, hopefully you feel better. Yeah, we... yes, yes, yes. I'll, I'll be fine. I will, I will totally just tough it out because that is what I am good at, right? There you go. Uh, we we do have an interesting show ahead of us today. There's some some interesting topics of conversation. Of course, always if ever popular, a wonderful Q and A. A little tease here. It's going to be fun, and we're going we have a nice Eve talk. I think we're going to have an interesting chat about some things. Before we do that, what genre are we at today? I can't really say uh, that I'm at a genre impasse today. I mean, everyone always listens to me play music in, uh, in the club and so on and so forth. And they always admire my taste in music, especially on the air. So today I kind of figured that I would blindfold myself, grab a dart, and throw it at the wall and figure out, you know, just find out where, where the needle lands. In this case, I mean, everyone seems to like the uh, symphonic metals and, uh, and other harder elements that I play, very symbolic of my style as a guitar player, right? So, that's what I've got uh -huh. for you on today. Uh, so you can expect stuff from um, really awesome groups, everything from Bullet For My Valentine to Within Temptation to Motorhead to Alter Bridge, Sabaton, oh. and Dark Sarah, Epa, lots and lots of really awesome artists Ooh. to, um, I guess, uh, get you in something of a headbanging mode or maybe something, I guess, a little bit more neoclassical. I don't know. You decide. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to kick off today's episode with this track. This is your weekly update on all things in Echoes and in Online. New Eden News. All right, welcome back for your uh, Eve News. Eve Talk here, Eve. Uh... New Eden News? Yeah. <laughs> New Eden News. <laughs> All right, I got a little tongue tied there. All right, we do have some uh, patch notes here. We had a patch on the uh, 12th. Now, uh, we did get a new Concord Pass. We are in Concord Pass Season 19. That started on Thursday, so if you haven't reset it by now, you're going to have been missing out. You're going to be thinking you're getting those points, and you're not. So you need to reset those because you're it does not carry over that uh that million uh lock in that does not carry over to the new season uh of course they did do some optimizations and uh they did a lot of bug fixes in this uh, particular patch uh now the uh optimization the big optimization they did though uh, is actually they changed the uh, max basic usage fee for Ansible Stargates. That's been reduced to 10 million ISK. Any excess amount will be disregarded. And of course, you know, the actual cost is still going to vary with the tonnage of the ship. For, for example, the maximum cost for a Dreadnought is 200 million ISK. So please remember to advise your toll setting in time there. Okay. Uh, now the uh, bug fixes, uh, they uh, fixed a self-destruct uh, issue with the uh, drone self-destruct, auto-destruct command. Uh, self-destruct damage from drones and cargo holds is temporarily disabled. Okay, they're currently optimizing the logic and will enable it once optimization is complete. So there's a little problem there, they're working on still that new feature that they, they introduced in a couple patches go there. Uh, they, uh, 
did fix an issue with the description of uh, capital ship component manufacturing skills. Uh, they fixed uh, an issue where attributes relevant to carriers on intelligent nanocore had no effect on supercarriers. So your uh, um, bio, those those uh, intelligent nanocores will work on your supercarrier now. Which you, at least it should. Uh, they fixed a rare issue where downgrading and auxiliary structure would cause corporation members to experience a blank screen when logging in while located in the same system as the structure. That sounds pretty trippy. Glad they fixed that. Uh, they fixed an issue where the intelligent nanocore may stop functioning when enabling autopilot on science. So they, if you were having problems with that, they should have fixed that now. Uh, they fixed an issue where the cargo hold would self destruct when a drone was destroyed. That sounds bad. I'm glad they fixed that. Uh, fix an issue where you would receive a durability alert when undocking a ship with a damaged hug. Oh, okay. They fix an issue where an incorrect nanocore icon was shown for some carriers. Okay, a little tweak there. Fix an issue where the reverse power skill of the pulse crystal might be unable to activate. So if you had that problem, that, that has been addressed. They fixed an issue where player ships would remain in space after initiating a safe log-off during combat and receiving the you're logged off safely prompt. Players can no longer initiate safe log-offs during combat. So, some, some people must have had some issues there. And uh, they fixed an issue where the mid-slots and the high slots affected different targets when the intelligent nanocore was enabled. Also, it was a webbing one target and uh, shooting another, I guess. All right, so that is the uh, the patch for the 12. Now, we do have a really fun Q&A that we're going to get to here now. Now, the uh, first question on this is, we can create up to three chat channels for our specific goals. What prevents you from implementing the function of deleting the channels we created, but that we don't need anymore? That is a good question. Let's see what their answer is. Is a thank you for your question. At the moment, we don't have a way to delete chat channels. However, the creator of the channel can change the channel name and the members to repurpose it. Okay, so that's that's a good tip. I didn't even know that you could change the channel name. So, if you have a channel that you aren't using anymore and don't think you have any use for, uh, you can repurpose it. That's that's good to know, right, Immortals? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think it's definitely good. Yeah. All right. Now, this, this next question is going to be a fun one. All right. Their question. In terms of electric warfare, would it be possible to create... For freighters only, a skill set or modules that can block the effects of stasis webifiers, warp jammers, interdiction bubbles. This invulnerability in all capital letters came to mind in this question. Module could be activated for 10 seconds and have a reactivation time of 90 seconds. Freighters are among the most slowest and vulnerable ships in Eve Echoes and possess no module slots for protection. Okay, this is somebody who obviously got popped in one too many gate camp. <laughs> oh man, I, that that's pretty. I don't, I don't I don't know. Like it's just it's it's a big it's a big ship and it's only made for one thing and one thing only. You just have to put it on yeah safer so, route. Maybe, I guess. maybe I someone explain this to me. But uh, so let let's just run through that that uh, scenario. You're about to, you, you land in a gate cab in a freighter that should have probably been escorted anyway, right? And, uh -huh. and, and, uh, yeah. you're, and so you're about to get thrashed, and so you activate these, this module, which, which helps you for 10 seconds, which may allow you to escape to the other side of the gate, but then what do you do when you get to the other side of the gate and your module no longer works? Uh-huh. Exactly, exactly. So, all right, let's see what their, their answer was. They say, freighters are heavy but high defense transport capital ships in design that lack protection measures and therefore need protection from other combat ships. 
Having enhancement modules is a good idea, but modules blocking stasis webifiers, warp jammers, interdiction bubbles may be too powerful. We understand your concerns, so we will release other modules in the future to enhance capital ship, including freighters. For now, we recommend that pilots not fly freighters alone and always travel under the protection of their teammates. In other words, friends don't let friends fly freighters alone. I think it, it, it's probably a person that's trying to run a hauling service, which it's very rare to find it in EVE Echoes, but there are still people that do hauling services. There was this one guy who was doing a hauling service with uh, with jump freighters during the um, the main state of the, the last war, and he got popped. And he got popped with, what, like 500 billion <laughs> in assets? Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah, dude, oh. dude got blown up. Like, he was doing a hauling service, and when I say that that thing blew up and it popped like a pinata, I mean, he was just loaded down. 500 billion was in little... stuff. It was crazy. That sounds like a literal pinata. You hope at least 100 billion of it pop dropped. I mean, I mean there's a whole bunch like, of crud. I mean, well, let me put it this way, right? One of the cheapest objects that dropped off of that kill was a nightmare. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was great. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm yanking that. I, I, that's, that's the first thing I'm looking for. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind popping a, a, a ship and it dropping a nightmare. That would be, I would consider that a good drop. <laughs> and that was one of the cheaper drops. <laughs> oh wow. Alright. Let's see, let's see where we go with this next question here. Okay, they say, with the development of the Corp Tech Tree, it will be increasing difficult for two corporations with developed tech trees to merge into one. Like changing corporations' names, is it possible to implement a reset button with a Plex fee to return a percentage of the amount invested? It's actually a decent question. That, that does bring up an interesting point. It's going to be harder as, as the game progresses now that this, this Corp Tech thing is, is something that people are going to be investing even more heavily in being in that Corp. You know, it's going to be uh, an interesting thing. Let's, uh, let's see what they said. Say thank you for your suggestion. We will discuss the feasibility of implementing a return. We need to make sure that this feature is not a misused. Oh, and you know if it can be misused, somebody is going to figure out how to. At the moment, we don't have. Any plans to develop faction dreadnoughts in the short term? Our focus is currently on introducing non capital ships. However, as we continue to release more new ships, we'll definitely come back to a capital ship version in the future. Oh, I like that answer. More subcaps? Yay. You know, they, they've already released, yeah, they released those, the, the battleships and the, the, the cruisers. Now, now maybe, maybe they'll, they'll actually release some, some destroyers that are actually or something? Oh my gosh, that's a dream of every destroyer pilot. <laughs> R.I.P. the destroyer uh, pilots. There's like none anymore. We own stations. The refueling can be problematic because there is no clear way to separate fuels intended to use and fuels you don't want to use. If you place plasmoids in the hangar and the fuel bay, then press the station's refuel button, both will be used. Additionally, dock ships currently being piloted will also consume any fuel in the cargo hold. While obviously not the biggest problem currently, could we expect this process to be more user-friendly in the future? Okay, so it be, be kind of a quality of life thing. Let's see what they say about that. Hey, thank you for bringing the ish, this issue to our attention. We will definitely look into it and see if we can find ways to solve it. Currently, we suggest pilots to choose the most cost-effective fuel from their inventory and refuel manually. I think they missed the point of that question because it's that you want know, that's a button. That that that's I don't know that you can refuel refuel a, a uh, cost manually. You press the button and boom, it sucks up fuel to, to start it. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, no. I think they, I, he, I think he complicated the question. He should have just left it with the the problem with the POS and kept it clear. I think. I think 
the dev kind of wandered off into the pasture when concerning about uh, the ships in the cargo bay having things in their cargo hold. So that, that's a question about it for, for that, but as far as the POS part of the question, I, I think that they kind of missed the mark on that one. But at least they're going to look into it. That, that is a definitely a good thing. But that is our New Eden news. That is our Q&A is, is there. Now uh, we do have a state of the war coming up here in, in just a few minutes. But uh, before that, uh, Kinsey, what do we have to lead us on over to get us into the mood to hear about some things blowing up? Hmm, I don't know. Anyone here a Megadeth fan? Yes. Okay, there you go. A toot le mord. Turn it up. Echo State the World. Welcome back for State of the War, brought to you by Echoes.mobi, the best killbot in New Eden. Alright, well... Some, not exactly a hot war still. We haven't gone back into hot war. I, I, I guess we would really call this the, the great cold war of uh, the game. Uh, the game hasn't really experienced anything like this before, where everybody's obviously ready to shoot everybody else, but it, it's... It's like they're waiting for something. I'm not sure exactly what. But there's still roams happening. A lot of them. There are a lot of roams. Even, I believe there's a fleet practically living in silent space. Um, so there's, there's a lot going on. Uh, and, of course, no one is safe. I, I even heard of a science over at ESCA losing its life, unfortunately, uh, to uh, NILF. Uh, so, uh, no one is safe from those, uh, cap hunters that Silent has, and they are quite effective. They, they are definitely putting in some work. Boom. Boom. Boom, <laughs> Boom indeed. I mean, you, you just, it, it is just a never-ending cycle. I mean, just, uh, just today... Uh, a Nidhogger got popped for a hard Nidhogger got popped. Got a Uni uh, Nidhogger got popped. I mean, you're just getting all kinds of crazy stuff. You even had a, a Lith get popped. That's at one of those Force Auxiliary ships. Yep, one of them got popped. That happened just on the 13th. So, I mean, these these uh, these capital killers are out there. They're 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 killing a so quite a bit. Uh, uh, just out of random curiosity, why was a lift out there by itself to get popped by a cap kill force? Yeah, I mean, on the, I can see that it had it got killed by looks like a, an Astarte got the kill shot, and this is, this was in Curse. Uh, so it looks like it, it may have been, uh, I'm, I'm just theorizing here because I haven't obviously looked at the story behind this, but I would guess they were probably doing something that required a, a, a capital ship with a capital uh, there, and they, they managed to pop that. Uh, maybe that was the slower one that couldn't get away? I feel like unleashing my inner milk chan right now. <laughs> oh, did you, did, did you even see the, um, the, the, the... Um, the other science they got popped by like three dudes. By three dudes? Yes, yes, yes. Like, it's actually. If you, if you got the, if you got that kill, I'll throw it out there into. Because oh. the, all the ones I'm seeing, science kill mills I've seen have like. 28, 22 on the, on the kill mail, <laughs> and I can't tell if uh, any of those are NPCs. Obviously, it becomes very hard when you're just looking at a screenshot. Ooh, on the fifth of July, a Oracle died. So sad. But yeah, it, it, there's a lot of uh, a lot of ships that are dying there.
Yeah. That that is uh tiny. But yeah. So there is there is a lot going on as far as behind the lines fighting and things like that, but I'm I'm not hearing about a lot of uh, Citadel timers and things like that uh, going on. Um, as far as the war is going, it is decidedly a Cold War, but that's a great environment for Mercs, isn't it, Immortals? Oh yeah, definitely for those uh, those little uh, protection packs and whatnot. You know, players. Uh, very short state of the war segment because we don't really have much more to talk about. I, 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 if you have any of uh, any Cold War stories out there, any any glorious combats just behind the scenes that you want us to talk about, give us a shout out and let us know. We will talk about it on the air here. But until then, that's going to bring us to a close on our state of the war, because there's not really too much war to report on. But when we come back, we do have a very interesting Eve talk for you. Mackenzie, do we have something to get you us in the mood to to talk? Uh, yep, yep. In the mix, this is Call of the North by Frozen Crown. Turn it up. Your music, your voice, and your weekly update on all things Eve. From Phantom to Solitude to a Starship near you, this is his talk on New Eden FM. Welcome back for Eve Talk. All right, well, we got some interesting things to talk about going on in the game. Uh, one thing that has happened that just happened uh, not too long ago was Equinox Investment. That would be Durkadur's project. Uh, is, uh, he got, uh, trade locked for 10 years. <laughs> or, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, you should have, no. you should have looked at the screenshot, like, I swear to God. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to back off, like, right after this, but it, it said something really stupid, like, 306, three, uh, 364,000 something crazy ass days. <laughs> it's like. It was, it was awesome. It was great. And then they ended up changing the name of the uh, of the, of the Discord. It it changed from Equinox Investment to Buttcoin Investment, which was uh, totally awesome. So yeah, this guy. Okay, so the number wasn't as crazy. His behavioral restrictions. He has been restricted from trading from thirty six. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Three thousand six hundred and forty nine point five days for illegal transactions. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yeah, 3,649.5 days. Don't forget, there's a day and a half included in it. And... Wow. <laughs> yeah, they included a day and a half in there. I don't know where... It's like kind of like, okay, so you have... Have you ever heard, go, like, gone to court and you had a judge say, so for your crimes, you're being sentenced to eight years and uh, one half day in prison. <laughs> In two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Dang. Pretty much. Wow. Yeah. Point five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's some that's some crazy stuff right there. I tell you what. And all those people that invested in that, they ain't never seen that disc again. Well, I mean, um, oh. Durkajer made a really interesting statement there, which um, was one of the most. I mean, it was an interesting way to go out. And I, I will read his announcement. It was his final announcement, uh, which uh, he posted on the, uh, it was like roughly two weeks, two days ago, right? And he says, yo, I'll keep it short and to the point. I've reached the final form of my character arc. I've scammed one too many times and got the Van Hammer. Netties, Permatrade, bam, my accounts. Needless to say, all the ISK is either gone or locked. While Equinox wasn't built as a scam, it turned out to be one. The reason I did it is simple. Greed. 
So now I'm going to GTFO. You won't see me again. No point in trying to contact me. I will be out of reach for uh, investors. You might feel angry, mad, or ashamed. These are normal emotions when something like this happens. Just know it wasn't because of you or something you did. I'm just an asshole. Adios. Oh, oh damn. Man. Dude. Oh. Durka. I love him. Gotta love him. I'll be honest, oh, I think wow. that Damon Zell did that better than me, but... <laughs> oh, man. Man, oh, man. Uh, wow. A, that is... There's my boy. That, that is... That is absolutely... Wow. <laughs> what can you it's say about of, that? I mean... a way to go out, I can say that much. Uh, I, 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 that, that's, a, that's an exit right there. I don't, I, I don't know how exactly how to describe that exit. That is definitely an exit. Man. So, uh, I mean, what that, what that equals out to, not equinox, but what that equals out to is it basically just means that, so, um, I guess the gig is up. So long, suckers. <laughs> Turka Dur just rolled off in a convertible with fucking dollars just flying by this car. Legit. <laughs> like, got him! <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you, you gotta wonder, in 10 years, will this game still be here for Durka to come back and get that isk? I mean, technically, his, his accounts are trade lock, so theoretically, if he wanted, he could probably spend it on the auction house, or he could spend it on in-game products or whatever, If he, you know, if he wanted to. It, it's just that trade is, even though the trade in Eve Echoes is so badly messed up, you know, it, it is really badly messed up. But the trade in Eve Echoes is still a, it's still paramount to getting anything done, right? If you can't write contracts, you can't get anything done. And um, it's one of the biggest critis, uh, you know, um, critiques that NetEase receives from people who are like alpha accounts. I mean, come on, it doesn't make sense that they can't write contracts at all. You have to subscribe and become Omega just so you can accept the contract or write a contract, which is uh, yeah. pretty insane. Uh, so, I mean, but it tells you of the importance of trading in this game. You you literally, you know, they're going to milk you out of at least $5 to, to, to have any um, hope of playing this game in a, in a positive way. But, so you have to be able to trade to play the game, right? Even if the trade system and the markets are, you know, not quite as good, you still have to do it in order to, to accomplish anything in the game because... It's yeah. the core of the game. So being trade locked for 10 years might complicate things a little bit. But, I mean, I'd be really interested to see how Durka would do because he, he was a very savvy businessman. And to be honest, I, I kind of feel like he did it. And it was a very, very, very cool way to save face, by the way. I just want to point out that that was a really cool way to save face. But Equinox was not really... It, it, it wasn't necessarily a scam because, interestingly enough... Um, <clears throat> I was I am on the server, and uh, you could actually trace where the money was going and where the money was like ending up and what was happening. You could track, you know, the the general interest and return values in the money because the math supported it. it it's it, it's not like. For example, and, you know, and not to poke the bear, I guess, but I'm, I'm going to poke them anyways. It's not like Netties who won't even give us, you know, keys so we can see accurate market data. Who won't even clarify right. that. Equinox investment was actually less of a scam than the official market that's in the game. <laughs> to be completely <laughs> fair. To be completely fair, be because Equinox investment was more transparent when it came to where the ISK was going and what was going on with the ISK, right? So... The return value on investments might not have been, it may have been low, and the amount of money that you are getting back was happening at such a slow, you know, rate that you might say, well, that's a scam, but investors were actually getting back money on a weekly basis, I think, right? Wasn't it either weekly or monthly they were getting back uh, a certain amount of ISK um, <clears throat> based on their investment and based on Something like that. whatever the, the, you know, the, the, um, the current percentages were for the returns for investors. They were making a monthly dividend or a weekly dividend on their on their you know on their investment and it was being sent out. So in theory, right. it, it wasn't exactly a scam. Netties turned it into a scam when they shut it down, 
But I mean, it's kind of like, okay, so where are the police to shut down your market scam and make you produce actual market data? Where's the, you know, where's the, the anti-scam uh, police to stop you guys from, from, from putting this cap limit on Plex that, 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 you know, completely decimated the game economy for like, what, six weeks? <laughs> you know? Right. Someone should have called in the cops for that. <laughs> but they call in the cops for Durka Dur, who, I'll be honest, I mean, he says that it was a scam, but... The guy was running a legitimate business <laughs> within Eve. It was, it, it wasn't one that was well understood, but I felt it was pretty legit. Yeah, well, it, he he did business, say man, that it. So. Yeah, and he did say it didn't turn. It wasn't didn't start out as a scam, but it turned out to be, and it turned, only turned out to be like you said because he, the uh, the devs pulled a plug on it. They didn't like return the investors' isk or anything like that. No, they just. They just locked it all up, so everybody who invested in it is just out. So thus, they got scammed because they're not getting their money back now. Yeah, but I mean, you know, a scam uh, to me, I would say that okay. So yes, Dirk Dirk did. You know, it was a scam. Let Let's say that. Let Let's say for the sake of things that he, you know, he cops to it as as it being a scam. But you know, I know Dirk Dirk pretty well, and uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to be honest. While I do find what he said is, is very comical, and I do think that it was a great way for him to save face, I am also going to go ahead and say that his intention was not for it to be a scam. It never was intended to be a scam. And I think that it was just a really funny way for him to go out and say, like, here's what the devs did. And generally speaking, I mean, you know, it, it makes sense because, you know, you think that the devs would want to return that since they are doing those things. But let's be completely honest about it. I mean, who stands to gain from that much is just being vaporized when, when you think about the market and the economy and the state that, that the game is in every time <clears throat> isk is removed from the game the devs are the ones who actually benefit because more isk being absorbed out of the game means more people swiping their credit cards to get plex to get more isk i mean they benefit every time isk is removed from the game so it doesn't even surprise right. me that they're okay the, with, with, with just locking up billions and billions of ISK. Well, trillions, actually. The thing about it is, well, the thing about it is, though, is that uh, Plex is, is the way people turn, they swipe their card, they buy AUR. Because you can't actually buy ISK. You buy AUR. You then use that AUR to buy Plex. You then use that Plex to buy things or use that AUR to buy things to then sell to get ISK. Mostly you buy Plex to sell. That's the the biggest way people swipe their card. They just buy a bunch of AUR, turn it into Plex, sell the Plex, boom, instant nest egg. That's generally how people swipe their card. But uh whenever with less ISK going around, uh that's less ISK buying Plex. It it shrinks the economy. Yeah, and I mean, the, but the, the economy, uh, any healthy economy is supposed to both expand and, 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 of course, retract. That's what makes an economy a fluctuating economy, and that's what makes it, you know, work, right? Um, you have to have sure. scarcity, and you have to have, you know, uh, abundance. It's, it's how economy goes. At some point, something is going to be scarce. At some point, it's going to be abundant, and, and then the thing that was abundant is now going to be scarce and so this is what drives an economy forward but when you get involved and you decide to poke your nose and you always want to manipulate the economy well it's not having a chance to expand and contract and in this case <clears throat> it's literally just it, it feels like it's in a constant state of of exhale where it, it just feels like the breath of the economy is just being squeezed out because every time you you look around there is something else that is kind of squeezing the general economy in in a in a negative way. Uh, think about what happened when they released the uh, with the the carrier into the game, right? You yeah. release a carrier that people can just buy, and the plex market completely just dried up. And so now there is a squeeze on the economy. You 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 take out like I think what was it one point seven two trillion isk out of the game. And you put a squeeze on the economy. You, 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 you deadlock this and this ISK is now just gone. It's vaporized. When you have a system set up where uh, just the click cost of an object is going to cost you like, you know, 60 to 70% ISK value and the rest of it is 
you know, the rest of it is, is materials, you are looking at, a, you know, a constant exhale. And so things are concaving, but nothing is getting an opportunity to, like, convex. And every time the economy starts to kind of rebound and starts to kind of breathe again, before it can really, you know, uh, contract enough, it, it gets, you know, it gets squeezed. It's like It's like having a balloon, and every time... You know, you get to a certain point where, you know, this person is like blowing up the balloon. It gets to a certain point, you just like squeeze some of the air out of the balloon, and this person ha is on this reoccurring. Uh, but, yeah. You know, I mean, they benefit. They benefit whenever, whenever the market is in a, is, is, is in a convexed state where it's, where it's, you know, it, it's, it's in a state of exhale and it desperately needs to breathe. And, you know, if you, you keep your, as a general rule of thumb, for those of you guys who have never, you know, uh, attempted to strangle someone before, uh, you know, whenever you release that, that strangle hole, they're going to be gasping for air. And that's what happens to the economy. Every time they release those fingers oh, off the windpipe, they're, they're, you know, they're gasping uh -huh. for air. The, the economy is gasping for air. I think yeah. it's, it's just very dangerous for a long-term economy. Uh, but, I mean, what do I know, right? There's an added complication that you know, these 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 market controls that these we we don't have a free market economy, so the way a normal economy works, it it it's we've already we're already operating under a constant stringer hold. The, those fingers that you're talking about never get released completely. Absolutely not. I mean, the, so, the U.S. economy so is a, is a good example of of you know of of someone always having their fingers on the windpipe. It's just the way that it works. But, uh, yeah, one thing about this game, though, the, the, the just the complexities of the economy is just one thing, but, but I mean, you look at the complexities of, of the game itself and the complexities of the meta the complexities of the economy and everything like that. I think that's, I think that's why Eve has such a draw to it. It it, it kind of sucks you in. It really does, because once you you get addicted to playing it, it is very difficult to leave. And that's why people stick around for so long. I think, just because there is so much to this game. This game offers things that other games just don't. I, I mean, the people that, um, you know, my friends in EVE Online, they, they teach an interesting lesson. I personally have been, uh, I, I think most of you guys that uh, that I talk to on a regular basis knows that I've been pretty busy. I've been everywhere from, you know, just doing things to, to, to push my health in a better direction, to getting my motorcycle license, to, you know, just, I've been like all over the place just handling things in real life. But one thing I, I, I do consistently is what I was advised to do by every friend that I've ever played with in EVE and that is just to keep your account rolling so you know it cost me a little bit uh, anywhere between 15 to 20 dollars depending on how how early in advance I pay the uh, the bill right but my EVE online account is always active I, I always have at least one of them active because I know that there's always going to be something that I'm scaling up and because I know that one day I'm probably going to want to come back and play the game again. And I think that that's, that's the big, you know, th that's the big allure. It's like, it's the long game. Yeah. Um, Kilroy, my goodness, one of my best friends in, in the game who also plays EVE Online. Um, we were talking one day about like, you know, about skills, like industry skills and stuff like that. And, and like I mentioned to him that right now, I'm not playing as much because, you know, he knows I've been running around. I'm, I'm doing a lot of real life things. You know, I'm kind of chasing the dreams that I, I have as a as both as a music artist, as getting my health in order. You know, I love uh, I love motorcycles. I'm, I'm doing all those things, and, you know, but the game, I, I keep I keep it open. And we, we made this joke one time about how, yeah, so I basically invested an entire year into just skilling my science skills because he knows the kind of player that I enjoy being in, in, in EVE Online. I want to be the kind of player where when I'm ready to play the game and I want to get out there and I want to shoot something, I don't want to shoot NPCs. I mean, 
Eve Echoes really just kind of, it kind of squeezed the life out of me when it came to writing because no matter what you did, you, you always have to rat. There's no way around it. You're an indie person. Sorry, you're going you're gonna to get out there and rat because you got to make the money to make the click cost. So you have to rat no matter what. You've got to find a way to make money no matter what. And so uh -huh. I kind of just got burned out. It's not that ratting in EVE Online isn't more interesting and there's not more content for it. There is. It exists. There, there's a lot more content for people who want to shoot rats in EVE Online than there is in EVE Echoes. And EVE Echoes does have a plethora of PvE content. But I did it for so long in EVE Echoes where there was no other option for me that when I got to EVE Online, I'm like, this is not the way that I want to make money. I want to make money by doing science and industry that's what i joined eve echoes to do i started off in a you know in an indie corporation we were 100 percent industry everyone was was contributing everyone was picking up skills to build stuff nobody was a fighter nobody was fighting until we got to low sec and we were being harassed by you know by a, a rival corporation who used to send members in to you know to gain us and then people started having to learn how to how to skill combat skills i was one of the first to learn how to how to do that and i would sit out there in a mining belt uh in a cruiser with while the rest of my corporation you know mined because that's what we did that's the gameplay experience that we wanted and as a corporation this is what we were doing and in the early part of eve before you know insurance and everything else we can all agree it worked. It worked well. If this is what you wanted to do, the gameplay style you wanted, you could get it. Um, and so, yeah. sadly, it's not something you can really do anymore. And so, when I go over to EVE Online, I want to do the things that I dreamed of doing in EVE Echoes. And that is being able to just... I am a very busy person. So when I go to EVE Online, I want to work on industry stuff or I want to go shoot players. You know what I mean? If I want to get out there and shoot, I want to shoot players. I don't want to shoot rats. I, if I'm if I'm looking for an experience where I just want to get out there and do scientific research or build or maybe do some scanning, you know, do some exploration work or whatever, I that's the experience that I want. I do all the things in Eve Online that I can't do in Eve Echoes, literally. So I think that I, I think that like when we make the statement that well, you spent a year just on that, and I just kind of brushed it off, and that's when you know you're a true Eve gamer, right? When you think about a year of yeah. skilling into something that you really want to do as being nothing, you know, oh yeah, I took a whole year and I just skilled these science skills and like, you know, it's like, you know, you just talk about it like it's nothing. That's because for an Eve player, it is nothing. <laughs> a whole year of skilling, it yeah. is nothing for us. And even in Eve Echoes, a whole year of skilling, that's nothing for us. You know, for most of us that have been playing the game, you know, or, or played the game from, from day one, who know Eve and who, who understand it, a year of skill point gathering is nothing, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I, it's an investment. <clears throat> I mean, I look at my character, I've got 182 million skill points. I, I remember wh whenever I was going to from that stretch to 9 to 10, and I thought that was taking forever. That seems like a lifetime ago. That was so long ago. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I think though it's it's that like people feel invested in Eve Echoes, and I feel that's the only reason, you know, the major reason why it's it's continued to to thrive the way that it has. Everyone has that investment, and I mean, you yourself, uh, we've talked about that before when, when Kelroy and I tried to convince you to, you know, pay, you should play Eve online with us. You were like, it's it's the investment, you know, I just, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to start over. I don't want to feel, you know, like having to redo that investment. And it is, yeah. you know, you have to, it's it's reinvesting. Um, So I, I think that that allure is keeping people. But I also wonder, you know, it's... It's it's actually I'm I'm actually really just impressed with the community and their resolve. That's all I'm gonna say before yeah. I say something else. The the community and their resolve has been just absolutely tremendous, and you know it's it's more than Nettie's probably deserves. But the community has yeah. been really awesome, and you know I'm proud of them. I, I just I just you know I'm, I guess I'm weak or something, but I can't do it. I just I just can't. Yeah. I, I just wish that 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 um. That if anything else, we should save the economy because little stunts like removing 1.7 trillion is may not seem like a big deal, but 
in the grand scheme of things, I mean, that's a lot. You know, think about what would happen to that is. any economy. What what would happen to the, you know, to the um to the German economy if if they just got up and one day decided to remove like a half a billion in euros from from the German market? What would happen? We decided to just remove like you know. Yeah, a half a billion well, in U.S. dollars I mean, from the U.S. economy, right? I mean, you you could look at it like you know this amount of money. I mean, one point seven trillion. Okay, this would be like say the U.S. government decided that it was going to delete Bank of America. Just uh, sorry, all your depositors. Sorry, banks closed. Nothing you can do about it. We're locking the bank. I sense that would a take a huge on. chunk, right? But it would take a huge chunk of money out of the economy. All those people who who had their money invested there, hoping to to get a return on the investment and and thus be able to to finance their futures, they're gonna be pissed. Boom. Yeah. Pissed. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder how many angry emails Netties has gotten about locking Equinox. If that was my money, I'd, I'd, I'd go crazy, honestly. I'd be like, this is insane. Uh, it would honestly drive me to the point where it, I, it I was... quit. Because if I had $600 billion in there or something like that, uh -huh. and they're just like, all right, done. Nah, that's it. I'm done, I'm done. I'm done with the game. Like, so I, I want to give a shout out to, um, to um, Damon Zell who does do Echoes from the Front. And he released a really awesome video uh, covering this. I believe it was like last week. And uh, because he was a an investor in Equinox, uh, he was he had access to a lot more information and a lot more in-depth exactly how much money was, was, was in there, right? And uh, he was able to go through the entire list of investors and it was pretty... It was pretty substantial. I mean, there were there were people that had like 10 billion plus, 35 billion plus invested in Equinox, uh, when when the bank quote unquote closed, and yeah, that's pretty insane when you think about like imagine being a person who has like 35 billion invested, and this is you know this is how you're making your money. This is what you're doing, and for people that 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 have been that were doing that, I. You know, and I, I would, I would say maybe you, you should probably, maybe play a little bit of like Wall Street. You might, you might find that game very interesting, and probably a little bit more lucrative than Equinox. Plus, you don't have to worry about the U.S. government shutting down the stock market. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I would. Yeah, say, yeah. We should probably try that, right? Because it was. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, generally speaking, I mean, I, I know how Durkader did it was kind of, you know, it was both funny and it was, it was you know, an asshole kind of way that he did it. it. It was comical, and I think that maybe he was looking for laughs more than he was looking to really piss people off. Or maybe he just didn't care, but I've known Durkader for a really long time since he was um, the uh, president of uh, Catch-22. And uh, when he's, like, really passionate about something, which he was really passionate about Equinox, he really put in a lot of energy really gave it his all and so uh -huh. we were we of course supported an uh, equinox investment i personally do not believe that it was a scam netties turned it into a scam but it, it didn't turn out you know it wasn't a scam it, it was working out and it was great for a lot of people and um uh -huh. it, it it sucks because what was the one thing that I loved about Equinox is that it was player driven content. Yeah, data into the spreadsheet so that you can follow things like market trends. It is fucking awesome for people like me oh, that just wow. want to play around with, you know, like the, the, the marketing and stuff like that. I just want you to know it is awesome. It's a lot of fun to sit there. If, 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 if you're really into this and you really want to play the game that way, you can now officially export market data, ship data, and all kinds of other data into a Microsoft Excel plugin. So now it's, it's like EVE Online is now officially spreadsheets in space. It's great, right? 
Wow. So, so, um, <clears throat> so you can do this now. So if you really, really, really want to play Wall Street on EVE Online, you can do this. You can set up buy orders. And I mean, the way that it's set up, you can literally sit on that for, for months. Your buy orders are not going to cancel. And you can sit on this for months, buy tons and tons and tons of stuff, and then wait for the stocks to rise and then sell it back and make money. And that's essentially the, the essence of playing stock market right so you can do it you can invest if you want to do that Durkader was creating something or he created something very similar in Eve Echoes and I and, and it's one of the reasons why I love what he was doing with Equinox I mean I didn't really get into investing I probably should have when he first was doing it because I would have made my money back several times over really we, uh, he, he issued an invite to us when he, he had he had just opened it was like open like a week and he was like yeah come on in and you know and do the investment and stuff if you really want to and I feel like if I had I, I should have just like invested in him you know as a friend and because I thought he was creating some really cool content but I, I didn't do it I didn't do it I actually regret not doing it when he first started doing that because it was great player driven content and that's what I loved about what he did so I feel like really the gaming community lost out more, you know, because NetEase decided to turn it into a scam. Was it a scam? No, not really. It, it really wasn't. It, and even if the returns were smaller now that, you know, the stocks had started to kind of roll and stuff like that. And hell, during times of war, from the reports that I got, everybody was fucking buying. Everybody was buying. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like everybody yeah. was buying stocks. It was great. And so we actually had an official Wall Street in Eve Echoes. And it got destroyed. Yeah. And and it, it, I don't yeah. know about you. I just feel heartbroken about that because I, for one, the economy of EVE Online is one of the reasons why I love the game. And I feel like someone stepped in and saw that we didn't have it and created it. And then Nettie's just kind of, you know, pulled the rug from under him. And now we don't have it again. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's... Uh... That's pretty typical for this developer, though. That that part of the course, sadly. That that seems that they uh they act and don't think. That seems to be. I, I don't uh, know yeah, about that. Big I, problem. I mean, I know I'm gonna sound like a conspiracy theorist when I say this, but I actually do believe that they know the damage and the extent of the damage they're doing to the economy, and I think that it's being done on purpose, because That's the more the Indian economy suffers the better it is for them. It's like if the economy was thriving, like super thriving, there would be less and less reason for people to have to buy Plex and stuff. You know what I mean? Of course, there would okay. always be those that would buy Plex anyway because they want stuff. They, uh, they want more ISK or m maybe they just want to, you know, buffer their bank accounts in order to start off whatever they want to start off. There's always going to be people buying Plex. In EVE Online, there's always people buying Plex. But the more you make the, the market self-reliant, the less people have to rely on external effects in order to get what they are trying to get done in the game. When the economy is suffering and people have to spend hours and hours grinding and they don't want to do that, it's like, well, what are my options? I can't do industry because that's not going to bring in the, the money. Exploration, odds are I'm going to find something that I can't really make use of or something that's not really going to bring in a lot of money and it's going to take me hours. You know, I mean, mining is not really going to bring me in that much. You know, it's like in, yeah. eventually you end up landing on, on some kind of ratting, whether it's doing dormants, whether it's ratting null space. You know, you're going to land on ratting one way or another. And I guess if, if you are one of those people that has uh, the nano core that basically does all the autopiloting for you, great, right? I mean, you can you can basically AFK it and it'll run around and it'll do this, these things for you. But it, it's like you don't have a lot of options to go out there in the game and make the money. If, if your goal is to make money in the game, which I think a lot of people would prefer to just, you know, work for the money and make it in the game or find a market or, or find something in the game that they enjoy doing and make money doing what they love doing, you know? Mm-hmm. Makes perfect sense. I guess I just really, even though I, I don't play the game anymore, I really want the community to just... The, I feel that our community deserves a, a game where... A sandbox game that has more options. And 
that's why I'm vocal about things like like with what happened with Equinox. I don't blame Durkader for it. I blame the devs for, for, for sitting there and for deciding that they were going to call this a scam. And it's like, did you investigate? Like, did you talk to the players? And, and like, like, you know, did you get someone to actually back you and say that, yeah, this is a scam. It's a huge multi-trillion is scam. Or did you just find out about it and decide that you were going to put a lock on the door because he was creating a market in the game that maybe you didn't agree with? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like trying to, you know what? Now that I think about it, I, it's probably better I don't say this, say what I'm about to say because <laughs> I realize that that could that could lead to a lot of um, a lot of poor opinions. Uh, but I I just I, I just I I just wonder if if decisions like this are about keeping the economy in a in a weak position because when the economy is weak in a game like this, people have to spend more money if they don't want to invest an absorbent amount of time. And sadly, that's how yeah. most mobile games are designed these days. It's, it's, it's designed where either you spend a lot of time or you spend a lot of money. And usually, I mean, you know, if, if I can go out to a gig and playing this gig, I can make, you know, a few hundred dollars in four to five hours versus it taking me like, 20 hours to grind out this thing and all I have to do is spend like 60 bucks and I can make these problems go away I mean factoring that into the equation I mean I probably just work like two hours and I spent two hours working my job which I can now which gives me immediate gratification I don't have to you know so I, I just I want the community to have a, a better gaming experience but I guess yeah. it doesn't happen if our community doesn't want it for themselves. And uh, I, I know a lot of you guys may not like uh, may not like Silent, but one person who has really been championing that cause is Bradrick. If you've spent any time on Reddit, you'll 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 find that Bradrick has been speaking out a lot of, about Netties and how basically this is an online casino. You know what I mean? It's it's literally a casino where people are investing absorbent amounts of money and they're playing the game and they don't even realize that they're in a casino. And he has made a lot of great points. Yeah. I need to just screenshot those and post them. But he made a lot of great points about how there are people who are developing gambling addicts or gambling habits from playing games like this and they, they don't even realize that it's happening to them. You know what I mean? And so it is it is very dangerous and, and it's it's I think that our community needs to be more aware of what they're what they're what they're doing and, and so it you know it just it just bothers me it, it bothers me because not because i'm an eve online player i mean i go over there i get the game experience i want that's why i keep paying, playing the, the monthly bill even though i don't play that much when i do log in i know that i have the experience i want in this game but it, it's more about like the dangers of you know what kind of experience are my community members having the majority of them still playing eve echoes the majority of them are you know some of them are are just playing the game and i think it's great that they're playing the game enjoying it and i, I that's phenomenal right my my corporation i'm so proud of them they're just doing their thing making their money building their stuff they do everything they're self-sufficient they, they don't even really bother you know they don't i mean they're a part of the alliance but they don't really like worry about alliance eight they do everything in-house and i i couldn't be more proud of them right because they're playing the game and they're they're getting their eve experience and, and crime is doing great right but you know there's also those players that like we see them on reddit and they're complaining because they just invested like five hundred dollars right and they did they invested five hundred dollars and they didn't get anything and it's like you realize that like Bradrick is right like you know Bradrick is silent and, and people may not like to agree with someone from the opposite side but man uh, you know we've had him on this show and the guy he, he's a he's a level-headed person and he's right you're playing you're, you're in a casino and you don't even realize you're in a casino and and there are some people that just like you know they're posting responses and and they're they're justifying spending like six hundred dollars seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars to play the game and you don't realize that you're in a casino you don't know it because the packaging is different, but it, it's no different from the people that I play for on some Saturday nights when I'm hired to play at the casino, and they're just there and they're pressing this button and 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 they spend all night watching this screen and tapping that damn you know poker button and you know and it's the same damn thing. I mean, what's the difference, right? Uh, but uh -huh. I would caution the community: just you know, watch what you're doing and. 
you know, play the game, make a great experience for yourself, and I, I completely support that. If your corporation is doing well for itself, and I, I, I totally support that. But if you are investing more and more money into the game, hoping that you will get something, a greater sense of enjoyment out of it, please stop doing that. Like, don't make that the reason you're spending the money, because I... I I'm one of those people that bought the Purple Nano Core when it first came out because I didn't want to grind dormants. But I really wanted that Pulse Laser Nano Core. I really wanted it, right? And so I figured that uh -huh. I would spend the, the money and I would enjoy, you know, having this core and I'd go out and I'd, I'd have lots of fun with it. And I did. I enjoyed flying around in my Balgorn and I, I had the core and I, I had lots of fun with it. And then, you know, um, my good friend Latara, uh, after I built my Apoc Striker, bought me this really cool skin to put on it, and I painted it the way I wanted, and I went out there and I nuked stuff with the Apoc Striker, and I had lots of fun with it. But at the end of the day, it's like I had fun for maybe two weeks, and then, but it, it didn't really change anything. You know, I spent 60 bucks on the Nano Core when it came out, or like 50, I don't know, I don't remember, and <clears throat> it didn't cure the the, the core problem. Th that is that I wanted to enjoy the game. And having this one thing in the game, which, you know, I mean, I, I didn't, uh, oh, correction, it was the implants, I'm sorry. I didn't agree, uh, I didn't disagree with the implant. I, sometimes I disagree with what the way Nettie's implements things. We use implants differently in EVE Online. I, I didn't think that their take on it was terrible. I really didn't. I didn't disagree with that. I bought one. But at the end of the day, the one interesting thing about the implant didn't really change the overarching issues in the game that I still couldn't make money the way I wanted to so if anything I would beg the community to just you know like be aware that no matter how much money you spend on the game if you're not enjoying it it's not gonna make you enjoy it but instead join a good corporation and and you know and work together with people and build something really cool uh -huh. and that's where you should get your enjoyment out of Eve Echoes because that's where the fun is left in Eve Echoes. You're not going to find it by spending more and more money. It's like a, an alcoholic trying to find happiness at the bottom of the bottle. No matter how many bottles you consume, you're still not going to find it because it doesn't exist at the bottom of the bottle. And you're not going to find happiness in Eve Echoes at the bottom of your wallet either. So just yeah. do it in a meaningful way. This is Eve Talk. Yeah, you're just going to find a worm. It's <laughs> pretty much. It's Eve Talk. It's about community. It's about educating our community. And I, I feel bad about Equinox Investments being taken down. I, I really do feel bad about it. Uh, I was behind Durka. Yeah. I love what he did. I mean, you guys can probably tell, you know, I, I came onto this episode kind of sick today. But when it came to this thing, I was really passionate about it because I like what Durka Dur did. I, I thought it was great. He was a content creator and yeah. he, he, he brought something special to the game. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I just. I just feel a, a small sense of being kind of enraged because something that was in the game that that was really cool got shut down for no real reason. It just it was just like somebody coming in and saying, "Oh, you're doing something really cool. Well, we, well, you can't have this, you know, because it's it's a scam. It's actually a scam." It's like, "Well, tell that to the players that are actually investing here and, and enjoying it. It's, for them it's not a scam. For them they're they're having fun. They're enjoying the game experience. They're making money on a on a weekly or monthly basis and for them this is part of their gameplay experience and even if they are getting scammed it's, it's not for you to decide whether they can enjoy that content or not because it's player made content you know um yeah so and there's, I just feel really there's a lot of about it i mean eve eve is all about player you know sandbox player made content it, it it's all about that I, and if you look at the way the game itself is structured, I mean, you know, we've lost the stock market. But I mean, we, we basically, the game itself has its own mock government system on it. I mean, you look at the way alliances work and coalitions, everything like that. It's like mock government. If you've ever been in mock government, same dang thing. Okay. So it, it, different governments are functioning different ways. Some of the, these are some of these are definitely not mock government democracies. You know, that's not the kind of government they're mock governments of. But it's definitely mock governments, and and and, and it's it's almost a, like a mock up of the real world because these mock governments have to deal with just like in the real world, governments have to deal with intelligence, intel, spies. That that that, that adds a whole new layer to the game in and of itself. And, and then, everything. of course, uh, right. And then, of course, you got the, the the economy. 
the the, the market huge, and everything right? like that. And like that's, yeah. that's the craziest thing. Like I I don't envy alliance yeah. leaders. In Eve Echoes, it is rough being an alliance leader. If you've ever done that work before with Chalandria, I know you have. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. I mean, anyone who's been an yep. alliance leader for even a month knows how hard it is to be an alliance leader. Um, yeah. in, in Eve Online, it gets even more tricky because, because I at least in Eve Echoes, you, you really have to balance kind of like economics, how you're going to do things with with military and with all these other things keeping people happy etc i mean it, it really is a challenge and it gets more involved because like in eve online you need your industry teams you need oh, them i like to do industry and i have this science out and they were like well that that clone is going to be super welcome here because we need a thriving industry i mean they, they don't have a little button that they can click when a ship explodes anything that's lost on the battlefield has to be rebuilt and 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 so that, right. you know that that's a big thing making sure that your industry team and your market like pandemic or like they have a whole every alliance has a whole damn market system set up and and i mean part of it is because you can have markets internal markets inside like corporation citadels and stuff where people are constantly buying uh -huh. and trading you know amongst the alliance and the system that they incorporated. Which would be nice if we could do. It, well, I Which mean, would they, be they so tried. nice if we could do here. They, they kind of tried, but they didn't want to release the stranglehold that they have on like free economy. So they gave corporations an opportunity to like sell stuff on the corporate market. And when I tell you that, me and, and Amy, we sat there and we tried to figure out the best way to make use of that. But it, at the end of the day, the only thing that that was fucking useful for was when it was time for us to do buybacks. Like we would, we would, um, we would stock up um, points, like karma points and stuff, for people to keep track of how much the corporation would owe them in terms of karma versus, like, ISK, etc., and so on and so forth. It was good for that because uh -huh. you could set up, like, you know, you could put ore there, buy artists for the ore, calculate how much it was worth in ISK, calculate what, how much you were, you know, how much karma you had to put in there or how many uh, corporation points you had to put in. And then when people were buying... Um, when people were, were, were selling ore to the corporation, they just had to go in and sell it to the market and it would add those points to their to their totals. So we knew how many points that they had and yeah. when they would earn enough points, we'd build their ship or we'd you know, trade for ISK or whatever. That's the only thing it was really good for. It was good for, you could eliminate Discord where you know, you'd know you need an, uh, a market Discord like B-Box, which is something we had in Pantheon. I'm sure you remember that. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> you could eliminate that, but other than that, as far as being a trade economy, you couldn't do that because the corporation would have to buy every little thing that every person was selling, put it on the corporate market board, and hope that somebody wanted it. And that's not how you run a free market yeah. economy. Well, the only way well, that see, can happen is if players, you know, can buy and sell between themselves. Well, see, it would have been so much easier if they just let us sell stuff in Citadels. Yeah. I, I mean, right? Yeah. I mean, the way it is right now, you have to go to an NPC station. Yeah. And, and in order for it to be visible everywhere, you have to go to an ITC. Yeah, it, it is a mess. I mean, generally speaking, just a, a alliance to alliance economy is enough. Like, because it's one of the mysterious things about EVE, right? You can, you can buy and sell stuff higher or lower at different locations. There are people that make up that make bank doing that in EVE Online. You know, transporting something that's really yeah. cheap somewhere else. And uh, well, all, and bringing it up to Jeter or whatever, do, you know? I mean, all they, all they had to do is tie it to diplomacy settings, the blue market. I mean, that way you, you, you could sell things in the Citadels and they wouldn't have to worry about it appearing everywhere because only if you're blue to somebody would it appear on it and it would follow the same rules, obviously. It would only appear if you're in the same region as them. So, I mean, it, it, it doesn't seem like it would be a hard thing for them to implement. My but point is, I, I don't understand... It, it, it releases too much control to the players concerning the economy, though, and and, and and that that's what I think the big the big issue is. I mean, ever since the game came out, it was all about economical control for for NetEase. It's it's been an, a reoccurring theme, and everything you're saying is absolutely true. You can do it. It's a great it, it's great to do it, but when it comes down to it, free market, it's just not something that really exists. It, it doesn't exist here uh, there well, are many different well, it, options it, ways it, that it could have happened but it's not really existing it exists in, it, it, but the thing, it exists in eo though 
So yes, the, my, my point is, why did they feel that? Why did they feel the need to put all of these restrictions on it? Because they want the control. They they want to control the the, the economy. It's it's that simple. You you have. They wanted to do it because it was all about control. Um, and I know that it, you know it may not make a lot of sense, but that that's what it is. It, it's about there is because let me put it this way. There is no way that you can, it's not possible for you to play a game like EVE Online for 10 to 15 years, turn around, be given the license for EVE, on, for, for EVE, Eve to make a mobile version of the game. And at this point in time, you don't understand how the economics work in that game. It's not, it's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible to have that much experience in EVE and still not know how things work. I mean, uh -huh. I mean, it's not like this. It's not like anybody's keeping secrets concerning how things work in EVE Online, right? I mean, when you think right. about it, you can go to evemarket.com. You can pull up. You can you can type in the name of an I an item that you want to that you want to get information for. It will tell you how much that item costs across the entire galaxy in every location there because of course there are api keys there that's a player made thing that that exists there the eve marketer uh website it is a player made resource but it exists so uh -huh. so it, it's not as though not not only that but you can get in the game and you can go to each one of the markets you can download charts you know like literally graph charts that demonstrate what the what the market value on an item has been anywhere between the week upwards to I think a year, maybe two years, something like that. I mean, you can pull up a, a huge chart, and I'm not not logged into the game, so I can't really tell. The point is that all the tools to do it have have been presented. They're 20 years old at this point, right? Or at least 10. Uh, many of these economical advantages came, um, you know, came after Eve had been out for a little while. But the 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 basic formula is at least a decade old at this point. So copying it would have been really easy, but it depends on what kind of market you want. Yeah. If you want a free market, all you do is just copy what Eve did. I mean, look at how many games copied what Eve did, and now they have a, a thriving market. I mean, games like World of Warcraft are significantly more simple when it comes to how the markets work. Uh -huh. But notice how much of the markets are similar to what happens in in like eve think about every other game yeah. think about the auction house system in final fantasy for those of you guys that maybe played final fantasy uh 11 or final fantasy 13 which had a an auction uh -huh. house system 14 uh, 14 thank you very much which had an auction house system that was somewhat similar to the way that eve's work right it, it was very similar uh -huh. and, and and i mean so much of this information what was presented came it would have to at least be somewhat inspired by Eve because it, the economics don't change. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can put your little spin on it, but when it comes down to it, economics are never going to change because economics remain static across the entire world. It, it, no matter what you talk about, no matter what you try to say, economics have not changed drastically since, since people decided that well. they were going to trade goods between one another. True, but the way that government interacts with it That's has, changed. and uh, ultimate, and ultimately, if you if you really want to get down to it, the ultimately the government of New Eden is Netties. They are the ultimate arbiters of anything going on. Technically, yes. So they they and you know they they are the ones who issue economic controls and things like that. Yes. All the all the functions of government. They that that as far as you know controlling everything they they do, but and and so I, I wonder if the difference between the the economies in EO and the economies in EE comes down to the differences between uh, the, uh demo, the, you know capitalism you know pure capitalism and and communist capitalism. Because communist capitalism is a thing, you know. They've they've created this weird hybrid blend. That's how they've become so successful. But at the same time, the capitalism is controlled by the state. So, I mean, it. it I mean, you said that not I, me. I, I, so. I wanted, well, I mean, it's it, 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 it's a fact. It is a fact. So I wonder if that's the way that they control the economy is kind of the way the Chinese government controls 
the Chinese economy. I wonder if this if, if they just feel it's normal that this is the way an economy is supposed to work. Maybe they don't see a problem. Well, I mean, if this is what, uh, for example, our, our Chinese uh, gamers are accustomed to, then it wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't see it as a problem on the Chinese servers either. And it would be very interesting to um, somehow take a, a visit to the Chinese um, EO servers to see if the markets uh, are, you know, have been have been modified or, or in any way manipulated, or if it's the exact same as what's on you know, the global server, right? I mean, it'd be very interesting to see if yeah. the very same thing that's happening in EVE Echoes happens on the EVE online server in mainland China because that's what, they, that's what they're accustomed to and that's what, that's what they do. And, and so, you know, it, th at that point it becomes more about, um, it, it just becomes about cultural difference, right? We're used to a capitalistic society. We're, we're used to just, you know, um, economy kind of, uh, it creates itself. You create opportunities for yourself and, and sometimes you get to cash in on them and sometimes they don't quite work for you. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, there's... Um, there, there are, there are a lot of differences. There are a lot of different things and a lot of different ways that you can kind of navigate those things. But again, you know that that's, uh, I guess that's a story for another, for another, um, for another day. Uh, I, I, I would love to, 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 uh, I guess investigate that a little bit more. But I, I guess at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, it is what you, what you have. Yes, in Eve Online, we, there, there are a significant uh, a number of differences and. It's, it's playing that video game. You're, you don't mind sitting there and going, okay, well, you know, I, I want to play this market. I want to see what I can do with it. And I mean, I found markets in, in EVE Online, and it was very, very, very fun and very lucrative to exploit those markets and to figure out how I could make money off of it. And yes, if you guys were to check out the API for my main clone in, in EVE, she is a trader. She, she, she has trade skills, you know what I mean? So I can play the market and do whatever I want to on the market. But it's the gameplay experience. A, a lot of what I do is about not getting the experience that I wanted over there, so I do it over here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, would, I would say that it is a little harder. But corporations, if they really want to, they can create their own internal economy. Alliances can create their own internal economy. It takes more time. It puts more. It requires more effort. But you can do those things. It just requires a little bit more due diligence, I suppose. It would be nice if those yeah. tools were in the game. But it's like many people have said. What, what CCP did in EVE Online, they realized that many of these things that players were doing weren't in the game and they became a part of the game because players were doing that naturally players were claiming places in Nullsec and saying that this was their territory much like how gangs uh, motorcycle clubs and and other you know and other groups will go in and claim a town as being well this is our territory right people started doing that long before yeah. sovereignty was existed people went in and they said that this is our territory and the same thing happened in yeah. Eve, in Eve Echoes right when we first started to explore Nullsec in in major alliances people didn't structures weren't really a thing and before citadels were a yeah. thing Pastas were a thing and people were, oh yeah living out of pastas yeah if, whole corporations you, living out of pastas for those of you guys <laughs> that were that were in that if you were in pantheon you remember living out of uh living out of living out of that one npc station and and we were constantly constantly going back and forth between um I believe it was Terran Federation. That was the first Terran Federation when they were living in Fountain and, uh, and Pantheon was living in Delve. And uh, I think it was like 319 or whatever. Everybody was all cramped yeah. in, in there and like the, all the miners were there because that's where the, the NPC station was. People were claiming territory even then. They had claimed Fountain. There were no stations and then stations started to become a thing. And then people were just dropping passes and saying, well, this is our territory. There was no Sav. People did it, and it got implemented into the game because, well, not for, you know, not for netties because it was already in the plans, right? But it happened in EVE Online because people were already going into Nullsec and claiming territory. So they gave them a way to actually put their names on the maps. And 
people started doing different little things and they started, you know, putting bounties on one another in, in the game, right? Because someone would piss them off and they would hire a mercenary and say, go and kill this person. Guess what? Eventually CCP put it in the game to make it easier to put bounties on someone so that a bounty hunter can see them and kill them and collect on the bounty, right? And so, uh -huh. I mean, you know, to this day in EVE, echoes you can put a bounty on someone's head say that uh one billion for the, the person who brings me this person's kill mail in this ship and i mean it's the same system right they present you with a kill mail you you give them a contract for a billion isk but in that game uh -huh. it's just so much easier you want someone dead you put a bounty on their head and that's it, it it's it's over it's done and whoever, goes after all the bounty hunter everyone yeah. can see it Everyone can see it, and whoever kills this guy or girl gets that bounty. That didn't exist because Nettie's just thought it was a good idea. It existed because players were putting bounties on other players' heads on, like, the forums and stuff. They found out about it and thought it was a great system, and they implemented it into the game. And it was the same thing with the market. The market was always pretty advanced, but it wasn't until economists got involved and wanted more information and wanted to figure out how on earth, you know, the market structure, you know, was working and, and, and they were requesting more information that those spreadsheets and those charts became available in the first place. EVE was literally built by the players. That's the fundamental of EVE Online. It was built... It was built by the devs, the players came in, realized that it was a sandbox, and they, they gradually started turning the game into something that they wanted it to turn into. And so EVE Online became uh -huh. the game it became today because the players helped to make it that way. The, every time they decided exactly. that something was kind of cool, they wanted it, you know, the devs looked at it and said, hey, that's a great idea. We're going to implement this into our game because to make it easier for the players to do what they're already going to do anyway. It's like they're going to do this anyway. We may as well just give them a place and make it easier for them to do what they're doing, you know. And I think that that's the mentality that's missing in what NetEase is doing. The players are going in one direction. NetEase is going in a different direction. The players are trying desperately to fulfill and get the content that they want. And Netties is is you know is is getting, they're going in a in a in a completely different direction. And and every time the player base doesn't want to you know come when they say come on, it's like they yank the leash and, and 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 try to you know pull the community along with their plans. And, and you're just supposed to go well that you know that's just the way it is. And yeah, it's sad because. Durkader may not have been paying a monthly subscription at this point because of course I mean the guy was was wealthy he didn't have to pay for he didn't have to pay subscription fees anymore I mean he had all the is that he would ever need to keep on fulfilling his plex unless he um you know unless the plex was was off the market in which case maybe he might have swiped his credit card once or twice to pay for subscription fees for that time but but Durka was one of those players who was actively doing something in the game. He was an active part of the community and he was creating content. And now that, that's a content creator who's now gone, retired from the game. That is one more person that was doing something different and interesting in the game that you no longer right. have. And I, uh -huh. I feel like that's the greatest loss. The, the loss is to the community because that's one other person that was actively playing the game, logging in every day running a business inside the game and doing something really cool inside the game that you no longer have inside the game because you decided that, well, this is a scam and we don't like it and we're going to shut it down. Yeah. No good. No good at all. It is, I, I agree with you. It is definitely a loss to the community because it, it, is, it is one more part of this sandbox that they have, they've cordoned off and said you can't play there. So well, what can we do? We just can trudge along and do what we can, I guess. Well, I mean, you know, for for those of you guys that are that are interested in checking out EO, there are a collection of us that are over there enjoying that game. So I mean there's that if if you uh if you have a half decent PC, like something that can probably run solitaire can probably run Eve online. <laughs> But I, yeah. I do know that this is a mobile gaming community and a lot of our players, you know, myself included, you don't want to have to, you know, be stuck in front of a computer all the time. 
I, I know the allure of mobile gaming because it, it is a lot more convenient. I personally, I enjoy mobile gaming. I, I own, you know, of course I have my cell phones, I have tablets, I have a laptop, which of course, you know, that's not technically mobile gaming. And uh, even though it's a controversial device, I, I own a Nintendo Switch, which I have owned since a couple of months after it came out. And even though I don't play video games a whole lot anymore, I do like to play it on, you know, on a daily basis for like maybe an hour because I like the allure of being able to play my game. For those of you that own a Switch, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Of course, it's an option on PlayStation. It's an option on Xbox. I like being able to pick up the game, play the game, hit the button, the suspend button, take the, uh, the console and maybe just drop it in my bag until maybe I've got a little time while I'm at the doctor's office and I want to play a little bit more and I'm just waiting here and so I, you know I pull it out and I play a little bit more and then I press the little suspend button and I put it back in my bag and for a lot of people that's the allure of being able to play a game on a cell phone it's something that you you need no matter what nobody can live in this world without a, without a smartphone at this point in my humble opinion um, and I think that that's the allure of these mobile games, but unfortunately, they, they, they're not what they used to be when they first came out. When, when the iPhone 4, for example, first came out, I still remember buying, when you were, you were, you'd buy the whole game, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, you bought, you bought a whole game, and the graphics were amazing. Those of you that might have uh, played that game back in 2000 infinite blade it was one of the most beautiful games i could not believe what i was holding in my hands on a smartphone when it came out in in like the year 2000 maybe 10 or whatever because it looked like a ps1 game or maybe a ps2 game and so i get the allure but at the same time mobile gaming isn't what it used to be sadly people are finding you you can't download a game off of the app store that doesn't say you know in-app purchases or, or something like that there are very few content or games that that you can buy where you 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 buy the whole game when you just pay one fee so you know people are realizing yeah. that this is it's a way to make money it's a great way to make money and unfortunately because the mobile gaming uh, mobile gaming is so com convenient that you know, it's a it's a prime target. You know what I mean? It, it is a prime target. People are, don't want to yeah. go out and just buy a Switch for this. You, why do it? I mean, you, you need the, the phones anyway. You need the tablets anyway. Um, but I, I feel like the way that we're going, eventually, guys, everyone should just buy a laptop because at the end of the day, you're probably going to end up needing one. <laughs> you're going to end up needing one uh, yeah. if you want to get your mobile gaming on because... The mobile games are going to become so expensive that I I dread that anyone's going to want to like mess with them anymore. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's definitely a problem in the industry. Definitely a problem. Well, I I think we we're we're going to have to close out today. I think we're actually half an hour over our our usual end time. So I think this is a good place to bring it to a close. I do have to tell you, though, should you in be in floating around in New Eden, flying around, and you spot somebody from Meow and System, make sure you throw a cat pun in local. They love it. And make sure to, you know, just like uh, if, you, if you see like more than one of them, make sure you dock up your capitals because you will get killed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that is a thing, too. That is a thing, too. But throw out cat puns. While docking, kill two dock birds with up, one yeah, stone. Yeah, dock up and then throw in the puns, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, love hugs and kisses, and uh, we should see you next week. I'll leave you with this one um, from Alter Bridge's album, I believe, Alter Bridge Three. This is. I